Hey YouTube friends, today I want to show you how I harvest and cure onions and garlic. Garlic and onions are great crops that you can grow over the winter when it's cold and everything else won't grow. Onions and garlic can handle really cold weather and then they're ready to harvest in spring like I'm doing now. Other people like to, har like to grow garlic and onions starting in the early spring and growing them throughout the season, but I like to do it over the winter. But however you like to grow your onions and garlic, you need to know how to harvest and cure them properly. If you harvest and cure them properly, they will last on a shelf for many months. You can even store them and replant them next year. If you'd like to know how to grow onions, take a look at this video. But today, we're just talking about harvesting and curing onions and garlic. So, let's dig in. The first thing is to know when are they ready to harvest. Well, these are, are these onions are right up on the surface, so it's very easy to see that they're nice sized and they're ready to go. But the, sometimes they might be buried underneath the soil and you won't even be able to see them. These onions I started in November, November the 22nd, and then I I uh, I actually started them in as seeds in October and then on November the 22nd I transplanted them out here into the garden and they didn't they they were not quite that big but they they were smaller than that but that's kind of how they look when you transplant them just little little seedlings but now look at them they're nice and big well one of the ways that you know that the gar that the onions are ready to harvest is when they start falling over you see how this one has fallen over it's not standing up tall like that one. It has fallen over. And that's an indication that they're getting ready to harvest. So we're gonna go ahead and start doing that. Now, all of these onions haven't fallen over yet, but we have a few of them that have. So that means that they're all, were planted at the same time. They should all be about ready. So we're gonna go ahead and take them all up at the same time. But you want to be careful as you pull them up not to damage the uh, onions, okay? So if you need a little help, a tool like this can be handy, just a little hand fork like this, and you can just sort of stick it down in there and kind of scoop it up from underneath like that. Uh, you may not need to do that. You may be able to just pull them up by hand. All right, when you do that, it's gonna shake off a little of that dirt, brush it off. You do not want to wash these off with water. Don't put any water on them because what we need to do is let these dry out. So that's part of the curing process is letting them dry out. So we're just gonna pull them up like that and set them to the side. Once we get them all pulled up, then we can uh, set them aside in a cool, dry, relatively dark place to let them dry for two to three weeks. You're gonna get some small ones like that too. No, that's okay. This part of it, since these are really close to the surface, they're pretty easy to pull up. Now, we're not gonna cut the, the stems off yet, and we're not gonna trim the roots off either. And we're not gonna wash these with any kind of water. We'll just shake off any excess dirt, brush it off. It's okay, it's not gonna hurt anything. We're gonna leave it all like this, and then we're gonna put this in a cool, uh, dry place where it gets good air circulation. 
and I don't like to leave mine out in the sun. It's not a it's not critical that they're completely dark, just somewhere in a shady spot. And this is going to work really good for my for my purposes. I have a chicken coop here and it's got a, 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 a roof on it to keep the rain off and up on top here I've got some chicken wire so I can just set these up on top like this and they'll get good air circulation and they can dry. It keeps them up off of the ground so nothing, no insects or anything gets, gets on it. And we'll just put it up here, keep it out of the rain, keep it dry. And we're going to let these stay here for a couple of weeks until they dry out a little bit more. And then we can trim them at that point and take them inside. Now for garlic, you know that it's ready to harvest when you start to see the bottom leaves drying like this. You can tell that these garlics are, are, are you know, starting to dry out and getting ready. And these bottom leaves are turning yellow and brown, and that means we're gonna be ready to harvest. Now this is elephant garlic, and elephant garlic is actually not garlic at all. It is a leek, but it, tastes like garlic and the way you know that it is ready to harvest is it starts to flower on the top and you'll see right here this I know it doesn't look like a flower but that is actually the flower of the um, elephant garlic so they're starting to flower on top and so they're probably ready I may give those a few more days because some of the flowers are just really starting to emerge. You can see right there that flower starting to come out but hasn't even fully come out yet. So we're going to give it a little more time to harp before we harvest it. But these hard neck and soft neck garlic, they're ready. So we're going to go ahead and get them out of the ground. Let me show you how to do that. Now garlic can be a little bit harder to pull out of the ground and if you just grab it and pull it like this, it's liable to break the stem off, leaving the bulb in the ground. So that's why this kind of a, a tool is much, much better for this. So what I, and again, you want to be careful. You don't want to poke your uh, garlic bulbs. You don't want to tear them because that will make them uh, rot quicker. You want them to last because they can last for six months to a year if you store them properly and you don't damage the bulb as you're pulling it up. So I just like to take this and kind of push it down into the ground, get up under it and just sort of work it up like that. Okay. You go from multiple sides if you need to, just get up under it, pull it up. And there we have our garlic bulb. And again, you don't want to, uh, it's got a little bit of a damage there, so that's unfortunate. That's going to make that one uh, probably not store as well, but get off me fly. But um, that's okay. We'll use this one first. And you don't want to wash these off, just like with the onions. You just want to uh, kind of brush off the dirt and because what we're trying to do is let this dry out as much as possible. So let's go ahead and get these up. We're going to start to cure our garlic the same way we do with our onions. We're going to put it up on the top of this chicken coop on this chicken wire and let it air dry in a shady, dry place with good air circulation. And we'll leave it here for uh, several days. And again, we don't wash these off. We're going to let this dirt dry. It's a little bit moist right now, but when it dries, it'll just shake 
off of there very easily. We don't want to get these wet because that's the opposite of what we're trying to do. We're trying to let them dry. So we're just going to put them up here on top and let them start to dry and give them, uh, we'll give them a few weeks. Garlic might take a little bit longer than the onions. So maybe three to four weeks, but we don't have to completely uh, let them dry outside. We can let them dry for a couple of weeks and then we can move them inside and we can actually braid these and, and keep them together in a bundle so that it makes it easier for them to be managed. All right, I waited a few more weeks and I'm gonna go ahead and get these uh, elephant garlic out of here as well. I want you to see how massive these things are. Look at that. That is garlic right there, my friends. That thing's huge. And we'll cure this the same way we cure the onion, the other onions and garlic. Even though this is a leek, it cures the same way. So we're gonna put this right up on top. Right here under this shed, out of the rain. Look at the size of that garlic. Look at that. Now that is why they call it elephant garlic. <laughs> That's amazing, it's huge. That's an egg, a large egg, jumbo egg. And then, oh my gosh, that's just amazing that, how big that garlic is. Two weeks later. So you leave them up here for two to three weeks to dry. And then after two or three weeks of drying, here's what you end up with. Some good looking dried onions. And same thing with the garlic. So what we can do now is we can cut the stems off of these and clean them up a little bit and bring them inside. So I'll show you how I do that. So we'll just find ourselves a shady spot out of the heat of the sun. And we're just gonna uh, take a pair of scissors or a pair of snips. And I just like to kind of snip the stem off and maybe uh, if you want, you can trim some of these root hairs off of the bottom. Okay, it's that simple. You're good enough there. Now, if you got a lot of dirt on the outside of that and you don't like that, you can just simply peel a few layers of that off and just kind of clean it up nice and good. Make it look just as good as something that you might buy from the grocery store. Just take a few of those layers off of there. And even if it's a little bit, uh, if you get down to a layer that's a little bit damp, you can, uh, you can just, you're gonna let these dry on, when you take these inside the house, you're gonna let them dry there as well. So uh, you won't have, you know, that wetness, that damp is gonna go away. The outside of those, you want the outside of those leaves to be kind of papery. And even if the outside of the layer, you know, if you dig down a little too deep and the outside is a little bit wet, it doesn't matter because it's gonna cure and it's gonna dry and turn papery anyway on the outside. And that outer layer being like that is just, it's gonna help protect the onion on the inside. And if you do this right, then you're gonna have onions that'll last you several months. Um, could even last you uh, up to six months depending on the variety of onions and, and how well they've been cured and if they had any kind of uh, wounds on them or anything like that. So that's all I do. I just clean them up like that. And uh, you can see right there how that kind of looks. And then I'm gonna put that in a box, just like that. And then I'll accumulate all my, my onions and garlic up and I'm gonna take them inside. So let's clean a few of these up.
I especially like if I've got any really ugly looking leaves on them, I'll just peel those ugly looking leaves off. If there's any extra, especially dirt, dirty onions, uh, you can peel that outer layer off as well. And um, that's why there's no need to wash these onions. You don't want to wash them. You don't want to get them wet because the idea is to keep them dry and not let them have any extra moisture or dampness on them. But if you do, if you just kind of peel back some of that extra excessive outer layers of the onion skins, you'll end up with a nice, pretty, pretty onion on the inside. Now for our garlic, we're gonna do the same kind of process. We're just gonna um, kind of trim it up a little bit. If there's any um, dirt on the outside, you can just sort of rub it at this point. That dirt should be pretty dry and you just kind of give it a little rub and it's gonna clean it right up. Take your scissors and you can just kind of trim them up like that just a little bit. I like to leave a little bit of bushiness on there. That kind of helps uh, wick any moisture away from it. Um, just trim a little bit of that stem off. This is one way you can do it. Another way you can do it, um, if, you, if you want, you can take several of these several of these garlic and you can braid them together and and make a bunch uh, i'm not going to do that today because I, I just prefer to kind of keep mine in bulb form without the stems on them but um i'll sh i'll leave a link for a video where i braided them last year but for today i'm just going to trim these up and take them inside So now we've got all our garlic and onion cut the, cut the stems and root hairs off and we're ready to take this box inside and show you how I store them in my indoor pantry. So in our house, in our basement, we have a guest bedroom. It used to be my son's bedroom before he moved out to go to college. And then when he moved out, my daughter moved down here and took over this bedroom. But then she moved out to go to college, and so now it's just a spare bedroom that we have in our house. But the cool thing about it is it's in the basement, and it always is cooler down here in our basement than it is upstairs in the main part of our house. And so this makes a great place to store root vegetables because it stays between 65 and 70 degrees in here. So over here on this wall, we have a little... This is just a little cutout space. It's not a closet. Over here is the closet. And over here was just this little cutout space. And so I built some shelves in here in this little nook. I just built some shelves out of two by fours. And then I covered those in some hardware cloth. Just screwed them in with these little lathe screws, lathe screws, just to hold them in place. And that just gives it a chance to let the air kind of circulate around. And so this is a great place to store things like sweet potatoes, Irish potatoes, winter squash, pumpkins, peanuts, and onions and garlic. And so that's what we're gonna be putting down here today. So we're just gonna put these right here on the shelf and they'll get lots of air circulation just keep them dry and that and and this room as i said is a, is a bit cooler than the other rooms in our house so this will help them also last longer and whenever we need them we just come on down here grab what we need There'll always be plenty 
on hand. And I just like to put them in here. You can put them kind of close together, but I try not to let them touch. Just gives them more room for air to circulate. Same thing with the garlic. Place them right there on the shelf. Keep enough space in between them so that they're not touching. That lets the air circulate around in between them. And then they just always be here whenever we need them. You may not have a shelf. Um, before I built the shelf, I just put them right on the floor. Put some newspaper on the floor and spread them around on the floor. Of course, not the best utilization of space, but with this shelf system, we can, we can still use this bedroom if we have company come over. I'll show you in a minute. We just close the close the curtain on the pantry and we'll be good to go. Now, once we get all that in there, we'll just pull that curtain closed like that. Helps keep the light out even more. And like I said, if we need to use the room, then uh, we can still put people in here in our bed. We keep the blinds drawn, shaded out. We keep the light off. And so, you know, it keeps it dark in here and that uh, is good for our root vegetables, kind of help them last longer. So we've been talking about how to cure your onions and your garlic, but you know, the human heart needs a cure too. Our world needs a cure. You agree? I mean, just right now in June of 2022, you look at the things that are happening in our world and our co country and our communities. I mean, can I get an amen? It's just crazy, isn't it? I mean, when you've got uh, a disturbed individual going into a public school, an elementary school, shooting children and their teachers, that's just... That's just crazy. What what are we doing? What are we coming to in our world today? And then they're going into medical facilities, a place that's whole purpose is to bring healing to the physical body, to help people that are in need. It's craziness. They're going in and shooting and, and doing those kinds of things. What, what are we doing? Our world is sick and broken. And we wonder, how can we fix it? And there are so many people have ideas and we argue about it and we get into all the politics of it. And we need new laws. We need to ban guns or you know, we need to hire a, or we need to elect a different politician to be in charge or different politicians, or we need to change political parties and let the other party fix things. Is that really going to work? Humanity has struggled with brokenness and sickness for millennia, thousands of years. Since the beginning of time, the human heart is broken and we need a healing for the human heart. You can go back 2,500 years ago. In the nation of Israel, the prophet Jeremiah talked about this. He talked about how his people were broken and they were going to be experiencing God's devastating judgment because of the terrible things that they had been doing. And in the Bible, in a book he wrote, Jeremiah chapter 8, verse 22, it says, Is there no medicine for my people? Is there no physician 
that can heal them. They were dealing with it back then, just like we're dealing with it today. There is healing. Jesus came as the, the, the balm of Gilead, but it wasn't for Gilead. It was for the human heart. He's the healing medicine that we need. He is the great physician that can heal our brokenness in our individual lives, in our families, in our communities, in, in our nation, and in our world. We got to turn to Jesus. But you know something that I've noticed about people? We don't necessarily want to do the work that it takes to find healing. We just want some magic pill that's going to fix things, right? We don't want to, we want to be healthier and we want to, we don't want to have all the health problems and sicknesses and illnesses that we have. But we don't want to eat healthy. We don't want to exercise. We, won't, we don't want to do all of the things that it takes to be healthy. We just want a quick fix. And uh, quick fixes don't work. You have to put in the work. You have to change your lifestyle and make healthier choices. Physically, if you want healing spiritually then you've got to make healthier spiritual choices but we don't want to do that we just want a quick fix we want a magic pill that'll make us better we want a new law on the books that's going to stop evil people from being evil we want uh new politicians in office that are going to solve all our problems. That's not going to work. It starts with you and me. Loving the Lord our God with all our heart, with all our soul, with all our mind and all our strength. And loving our neighbor as ourselves. This is where it starts. It is not easy. And it's not quick. It takes time. It takes hard work. It takes all of us working together day by day by day by day, loving each other, doing the right thing to change our world. And some people just feel like that's too much work. And so they want to go for a quick fix. Quick fixes never work. Even if they fix something in the short term, it won't last. It will be very short-lived. And then you just have the same old problems that you had before or problems that are even worse. That's not what we need. That won't solve any problems. That won't stop any madmen from killing people. That won't stop our world from falling apart. God knew what we needed. And in John 3.16, it says he loved the world so much that he sent, let the fast car go by. John 3.16 says, God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son so that whoever believes in him will not perish but have everlasting life. And who was it that Jesus was? That What did he do? Did he have some quick fix? No, sir, he did not. He lived his whole life on this earth. He sacrificed so many of the normal things that, that people get to enjoy, never had uh, a relationship with a woman, never got married, never had children, lived until the prime of his life. And then even though he was innocent, he gave up his life for our sakes in a painful, shameful death on a cross because that's what we deserved. But he took our penalty for us. And he says, I will bring forgiveness for your sins, but I will also bring healing for your soul. Healing, not a cure, not a quick fix. Healing. 
And how do we find that healing? We follow Jesus. It's not just a prayer that we make. It's not just a one-time decision and then it's over. No, sir. It's a daily taking up your cross, denying yourself, and following Jesus. That's what brings healing. That's what cures the human heart and helps to bring healing to our broken world. The question is, are you ready for that? Are you ready to take the plunge? I hope you are.